Okay, let's start chapter five right here. Uh, we get to change a little bit of gears um, looking at radicals. Uh, this section right here, 5.1 is the nth root and radical exponents. And so uh, the first few sections, we're going to talk about the different properties and rules of radical expressions. Um, and then from there, we're going to go back to our good old favorite of graphing um, these radical functions. So let's take a look right here at our first vocabulary term. And it says the nth root of a. So what exactly does that mean? The nth root is whatever the, what we call the index. Okay, and then so whatever the root is of a. And so typically what we're used to is just looking at the square root, right? If we take the square root of four. Now, when we take a look at the square root of four right here, there is actually a number that's right here in the index for two, uh, n, and that's two, right? This is the square root of four, which ends up equaling two. It's e it means the same thing. But we never really put the two there, it's just automatically known. So, but for anything else, you're going to need to put numbers there. If we go and take the cube root, then we put the three there. And then the fourth root, fifth root, and so on, we put a number. But if it comes to square root, we don't do that. So, once again, uh, the index of a radical, n is the index of the radical. So, if I say, what is the index? We're talking about this number or value right here. So now you pretty much know everything about square roots or radicals. Now it's putting everything into practice. Uh, a lot of this we kind of actually have dealt with already. Um, if n is an even integer, okay, so remember, we're looking at the nth root of a, and what they're saying is that this n right here is an even integer. Okay, we then we have the following. If a is less than zero, we have no real nth roots. If a is equal to zero, then we have one real nth root, and if a is greater than zero, there are two real nth roots. So think about this. What they're saying right here is I can't pretty much, I cannot have a negative integer in here, right? Because if I have like the negative, uh, square root of negative four, then I have no real roots. What I do have are two imaginary roots, right? So remember, our a value or what's inside of the radical or what we call the radicand it cannot be negative. It could be zero and we have one real root. It could be a positive number and we have two real roots. Just like think about the discriminant when we're dealing with the um, quadratic formula. Okay, all those, the concepts right there apply. But when it comes to odd integers, we do have, we can have a negative, what we call radicand or the number inside the radical. It says if a is less than zero, then we have one real root. Why is that? Well, think about this. If I have the cube root of negative one, what does that equal? Our one real root of negative one. Because I could take negative one times negative one, it's positive one, multiply by negative one again, and end up being getting an answer of negative one. So when we have right here, n is an odd integer, so let's say 3, 5, 7, etc. I can have an answer if my uh, value of a is negative. Not the case over here with even integers when a is even, so like square root, fourth root, uh, sixth root, eighth root, and then the radicand happens to be negative. No, no real roots. Uh, when a is equal to 0, right here continuing on with our odd integers then you'll have one real root and it'll be zero and when a is greater than zero 
you have also one real root. You're not going to have two like you do in even um, when n is an even integer. Let's talk about raising a power to a power next. Uh, one of the rules right here is what happens when you when you raise a power to a power. For example, what you'll see quite a bit right here is let's say if I have a to the second power and I raise that to the one half power. Do you guys remember what the rule is? If not, raising a power to a power, you got to multiply the exponents. All right, just that simple. So we got a to the second power uh, raised to the one half power. That's saying you're going to take two and multiply it by one half. And what does that equal? It equals one. So we got a to the first power, or just a by itself. Uh, another example right here. Let's say we have a to the one half power, and we raise that to the fourth power. So what happens here? Take one half times four, and this ends up, ends up equaling a to the second. All right. So remember your rule of when you see a power raised to a power just like this, you can multiply the exponents. It's different than this. If I take a squared times a to the third, this is when we multiply exponents. And then the rule for this, once again, is that you add the powers, and this ends up equaling a to the fifth. Okay, so it's a very important property of raising a power to a power. And remember, you multiply the exponents. All right, so next up, we're going to take a look right here at rational exponents. And so, rational exponents, if we take a to the 1 over n power, and it says um, it's got to be an nth root of a and let m be a positive integer, what they're showing you is this. This a to the m over n is equal to the same thing as n over a to the m power. These are both the same. Let's put it this way. If I have a to the one half power, remember, n is 2. So what this exactly is the same as is square root of a to the first, like so. There you go. They are both exactly the same thing, just rewritten. So now, if you see yourselves with um, a rational exponent, you can go ahead and rewrite things, and that might be a little bit easier in helping you solve out the problem. Now let's take a look at the second one. Remember, one of our rules, I guess, kind of unspoken, and we, but we've talked about it, is... We do not want negative exponents. So no negative exponents All right, typically in math we do not want nor do we need negative exponents. The only time uh, realistically where you do use it is when uh, you are dealing with uh, let's say for example like scientific notation, really big numbers, right? We got like uh, like 5.02 times 10 to the negative 35th power. You know, that's to show you that some we're dealing with a very, very small number. So what do we do? We go ahead and we take um, our, if we have a negative exponent, we bring it down to the denominator. All right. And we go ahead and instead of having a negative exponent, it becomes positive. So let's say, for example, right here, if we have a to the negative Let's put, uh, let's say, two-thirds power, okay? So we can go ahead and rewrite this as a to the negative two-thirds, or a to the two-thirds, where it came down to the denominator, and then you can go ahead and rewrite this as one over, and then we got ourselves the q root of a 
to this second power. Uh, what you could also see right here is this. You could also rewrite it like so. And even for like this example right here, you could do the same exact thing. And so both of these happen to be the same. So let's put everything together. Let's take a look. It says find the indicated nth root of a. Now, if you need to use your calculator, use a calculator. Um, hopefully uh, over time, some of these numbers become so familiar that you don't need to do that. All right, so let's see what we can do right here. It says n is equal to 3, a is equal to negative 125. So if we rewrite this, this is the cube root of negative 125. Now, if my index is odd and my radicand is negative, I can get a solution. I can get one real solution. Let's figure out what that is. And so right here, this ends up equaling well, let's let's first let's rewrite this. I can rewrite this as negative one twenty-five uh, to the one third power. Okay, so just kind of showing. All right, what we could do? We could rewrite it. Super. Uh, what is this number? It's not going to be something too big. That number, what this equals, is negative five. Negative five times negative five, positive twenty-five. Twenty-five times negative five, that gets us to negative one twenty-five. Next up, looking at number two right here. So what we have right here is the square root of negative 400, or the second root of negative 400. Remember right here, if it's an even index, odd number, no real square roots. We have, we can have two, um, what is it, imaginary roots, right? That we can have, but no real square roots. And then let's go ahead right here. We've got ourselves a sixth root of 64. And this ends up getting us right there. Uh, or even uh, index, positive uh, number inside. We should have two real roots. And that's plus or minus two. All right. Uh, in your calculator, you probably see this x root of n. That's the button you're going to use to be able to plug in the different numbers in the right spots. Okay, when you're dealing with uh, these types of uh, problems. All right. So this is the ticket, or you could go ahead and take this and rewrite it to a, a rational integer or a exponent and then you could put like 64 raised to the and then you put like 1 over 2 and you might need to put this in parentheses when you're plugging that into your calculator okay we move on um, evaluate the expressions without using a calculator some of these you should be able to do it may be more familiar if you rewrite this, like number four. Let's take 64 to the one half power. If you rewrite it, it will be square root of 64. So that's pretty simple. That's eight. For number five, let's rewrite this. Remember, negative 27 raised to the one half power, this is the same thing as the cube root of 27 to the first. Answer negative three. Okay, so a lot of these, I would say rewrite it and you should be good to go. Some of, some of these are very difficult. Um, I'll, I'll admit uh, the way things, like number six, like realistically, uh, let's just rewrite it though. I think that's good practice. Um, my index is five, so we got the fifth root of 32 to the seventh power, or you could rewrite it like this. And that, I would say, hey, you want to be plugging this into your calculator, most likely. Or uh, the fifth root of 32 is probably a small number. It is. It happens to be, uh, I think it's 2, right? 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, 
times 2, 16 times 2 again, 32. So then they expect you to say, all right, what's uh, um, 2 to the 7th power? Well, I don't have that off the top of my head. I'd say use a calculator. Let's take a look right here at next up at number 7. Okay, let's rewrite this, and we end up with uh, the square root of 49 to the negative third power. Okay. Doable, right? The square root of 49, what is that? 7. And then we have 7 to the negative third power. Remember, no negative exponents. So let's rewrite this as 1 over 7 to the third. And then think about it. If it's negative, remember, we're dealing with small numbers. So if I have 1 over 7 to the third, that'll be a smaller number, a fraction, and that actually simplifies down to 1 over 343. So although they do want you to evaluate these without a calculator or using a, without using a calculator, uh, I think it's important for you to understand, all right, some of these are doable, but you're going to have to rewrite the problem so that you could easily convert them and to get your answer. And that's what I'm trying to show you right here in these examples from 4 through 7. Let's go ahead and move on next. Let's take a look at number 12. Okay, so we've got to match the equivalent expressions. Now, all of these we could be rewriting. Don't forget, we have n rad a, okay, or the uh, the nth root of a. And so how can we rewrite these things is, the, is kind of what we're seeing here. Uh, remember right here, the square root of a, how could I rewrite that uh, with a rational expression? Well, the square root of a is the same thing as a to the one-half power. So let's go ahead, if I take a to the one-half power and I raise that to the third power, now raising a power to a power means to multiply. So guess what? This ends up being a to the three-halves. Guess what? That happens to be letter C. So number 12 is C. Let's see what we could do with number 13. Go ahead and rewrite this. Looks like we have the negative out in front, so that's still going to remain. And then we have a to the, don't forget, 1 over 3rd. Which one do we see looks like that? Ah, letter D. Okay. On number 14, you got to be able to rewrite the cube root of A. Well, that rewrites into A to the... Both of you got one third power. We raise that to the second. We'll multiply the two together, and that becomes a to the two thirds. Letter B. Fantastic. And then right here, finally, let's go ahead and see what we got. Uh, I know you could probably deduce and narrow it down because there's only one letter left. But remember, this right here ends up being a to the or 1 over a to the 1 third power. I see nothing of that here. So remember, I typically, I bring the a to the 1 third down because I don't want it to be negative. But if I move it back up, it, this turns into a to the negative 1 third power, which is why letter A is your answer. So right now, I think the big thing with this section so far is making sure you can convert the radicals into exponents, the exponents into radicals. Biggest part right here. All right, let's solve some solution. Let's solve some problems out. Find the real solutions to the equations and round to the new two decimal points when appropriate. Meaning they expect you to use a calculator. Okay, so. Let's solve this out like we normally would. We got to get x by itself. We'll divide both sides by 6 right here on number 16. So I got x to the third is equal to negative 1. 
So how am I going to get rid of this uh, uh, exponent to the third power? Well, how about I take the cube root on both sides? So what am I left with? x is equal to the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. There you go. All right, looking at number 17. All right, just like uh, when you're doing like completing the square. Right, you had something that looked very similar to this. And think we got to start undoing things. I see right here to get x by itself. Well, I'm supposed to, like, I've got exponents and I got this 2 out in front. Well, how about let's start off, divide both sides by 2. And so now I've got x plus 5 to the fourth power. 128 divided by 2 is 64. So next up. I've got myself x plus 5 to the 4th power. In order for me to get rid of it, I've got to take the 4th root of both sides. So now I'm left with x plus 5, and that's equal to the 4th root of 64. What's the 4th root of 64? Well, that right there, I don't know. I think uh, it's not a nice number, but... What I do need you to remember is this. you got two answers, plus or minus, right? Because, remember, we're dealing with an even index and a positive number inside the radical. So we can go ahead and do that. Get, uh, do that. Let's get x by itself. We'll subtract 5 to both sides. So i got negative 5 plus or minus rad 64. Round your answers to the nearest two decimal points, use your calculator, and you should end up with, looks like negative 2.17, and also uh, and negative 7.83, I believe should be your two solutions here. Let's go right here down to number 18. All right, so let's get x to the fifth by itself. I should add 32 to both sides. So then we end up with, right here, negative 32. I have x to the fifth power. Let me square root, or I can't square root it. I can't third root it. But what I could do is take the fifth root, and that's possible, especially with a negative number, because odd indexes with negative numbers, I can get one real solution. So we take the fifth root of negative 32, and that will be negative 2 right there. And there you go. Just like that. Taking a look at 19, let's do some of the same old stuff. Um, let's move this 100 over to the other side. I got negative 110. X to the third is equal to negative 100. I don't like neg. Uh, I don't like negatives. I don't like uh, fractions. So how about this? What can we do to both sides to get rid of this negative one tenth? Easiest thing? Well, let's multiply both sides by that number. The reciprocal of negative one tenth is going to be ten, or negative ten. So let's go ahead. If I multiply these two together, this will get me x to the third, negative ten times negative one hundred. That'll equal negative 1,000. So let's go ahead. We'll Q root both sides. And x is now equal to negative 10. All right. And there you go. Right there, we now have our answer. Actually, sorry. Negative times a negative that should get us actually positive 1,000, right? So we have a positive 1,000 right here, and then we take the cube root of 1,000, and our answer is 10. All right, last but not least, let's take a look right here at this word problem. It says the volume of a cube is 1,728 cubic inches. What are the dimensions of a cube? 
Well, right here, it definitely helps to know what the equation to find the volume of a cube is. And volume is equal to side cube. Remember, a cube right here is a square, but all sides you know, being the same. Something like this, right? So length, width, height. S times S times S gets you your side cubed. So what are the dimensions of the cube? We've got to figure out what the side is. Well, they give us volume, 1,728. That's equal to S to the third. So what we can do right here is go ahead and cube root both sides. And S is equal to, well, use your calculator, uh, cube root of 1,728 happens to be 12. So what are the dimensions? Remember, a cube length, width, and height, or side, 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 it'll be 12 by 12 by 12. And that would be the dimensions of a cube with the volume of 1,728. So there you go. You now know how to convert radicals into rational exponents and vice versa. And... Go ahead and good luck with your homework.